Hello everyone, good morning. I'm uh, Michele. I'm one of the two PhDs involved uh, in, the, in the project. I'm based in Brussels, but uh, my case study is still in Africa. So we moved some thousand uh, kilometers uh, west from, from Libya. Uh, my case study is in Morocco. Uh, in this presentation, I want to briefly uh, introduce you to some key aspects of the urban and rural policies uh, implemented by French administration during the protectorate in Morocco uh, and the work of one of the protagonists of uh, Moroccan modernization, the French architect and urban planner uh, Michel Bouchard, that operated in the country from second, the second post-war period until the 1970s, when Morocco was already uh, an independent country. Then I will talk to you about the Gar Valley, which is the focus of my research. And specifically, I will talk, I will talk to you about two interrelated processes that, uh, in which the region was involved, uh, the modernization of its agriculture and the series of large-scale projects implemented by Ecochar and uh, his team of collaborators that entail the reorganization uh, of its territorial structure and the construction and rearrangement of more than 80 rural villages. And then I will uh, finish with uh, by posing some methodological questions that we might want to discuss later today or, or, or tomorrow. So, um, Morocco was a French protectorate from 1912 to 1956. Uh, <coughs> since the first <coughs> Uh, of the French protectorate, the French administrator implemented an ambitious um, strategy of transforming of the traditional settlement pattern of the country. Before French colonization, Moroccan most important cities, from both the political, religious, and uh, economical point of view, were the four imperial cities, Fes, Marrakesh, Meknes, and Rabat. And as you can see from the map, three out of four of them are located far from the coast and closer to the Atlas Mountains. Since the 1920s, the colonial power had prompted uh, uh, the development of coastal cities to facilitate trading with mainland France and Europe. This fact and the concentration of the French investments in the industrial sector of these coastal cities induced a phenomenon of mass migration of people coming especially from rural areas that moved to Casablanca, Rabat, Kenitra, and many of the new cities developed by the French. This produced a demographic crisis uh, that saw the emergence of two main interrelated problems. From one side, the urban overpopulation with hundreds of thousands uh, of, uh, yeah, hundreds of thousands sorry, of people crowding in slums in uh, Bidonville um, that were mushrooming on the periphery of the bigger cities uh, on the coast. And on the other side, the radical decrease of rural population. So when the French architect and urban planner Michel Ecochard arrived in uh, Morocco in 1947, the demographic crisis was at, at uh, its peak. As you can imagine from the photo, Ecochard was a man of action uh, with more than a decade of experience uh, working uh, in the French colonies in the Middle East. He was trained as an architect in Paris, but started soon to work in Syria in the field of heritage conservation first and then as urban planner. He was also, since 1946, a member of the SIAM and he had also participated to the famous French study mission in the US together with uh, Le Corbusier. In uh, Morocco, he headed uh, the Service de l'Urbanisme, an office he, completed, uh, he completely uh, reorganized and he was also able to obtain from the French administrator a large decision, decision power and conspicuous conspicuous fundings with the aim of giving a substantial uh, contribution in solving the critical situation in which Morocco was after the war. 
So his strategy was twofold. From one side, building large-scale residential neighborhoods to host people that were living in extremely poor living conditions in the slums outside urban areas, and on the other, favoring the modernization of the rural economy to induce less and less people to migrate to cities. His urban projects are quite famous and well-treated in architectural and urban planning history. Ecosharp conceived uh, a grid uh, of 8 by 8 meters that became known as the Tram Wit or uh, Tram Ecosharp, um, whose aim was to be a rational, a rationalized basis upon which a new urban tissue could be installed. This formula was inspired by the traditional Moroccan Medinas, but at the same time, in Ecosharp's mind, it was able to improve living condition and building a large number of houses in short time and at low costs. This is the famous Capilla Central in Casablanca, the white part and the two uh, other on the background. Um, the impact of the Tram Ecosha was uh, enormous in the uh, Moroccan urban landscape. And still today we can find traces of this idea in the contemporary urban legislation in Morocco. You can see from this zoomed out photo the dense issue of courtyards and patio houses. However, as I said, the strategy of the surface urbanism and of Ecoshar was twofold. And the rural environment played an equally important role in its action. But it is still very unexplored and no significant uh, scientific literature has been produced about this topic. We know that the project was uh, very ambitious and uh, entailed the realization of a hierarchical network of agro-industrial villages closely bound with infrastructural networks. So we now arrived, uh, uh, we now arrived to the specific case study of this research, the Garb Valley. The Garb uh, is a fluid <laughs> coastal plain north of Rabat and it was regarded as a very important region for Moroccan economy because of its richness in water, at least compared to other areas uh, in Morocco, and therefore it was considered as a potentially highly profitable resource, uh, agricultural resource. Uh, sorry, I forgot to say it. Um, at that time, this data refers to 1951, um, <laughs> About 700,000 people were living in the areas. The area is about 18,500 square kilometers. Um, in the first half of the 20th century, the area was characterized by the presence of several medjas, which is the Arabic word for uh, semi permanent swamps, in darker blue with the, in the map on your left. And a large part of the region was periodically flooded because of the high variation level of the precipitation and of the water level of the Cebu River, the main river uh, of the valley. And it's also one of the most important uh, rivers in North Africa. For this reason, a large program of colonization was carried out to dry the swamps, stabilize the water level with numerous uh, dams, and then creating a network of irrigation canals. Uh, in the map on your right, that were regarded, were seen as a fundamental requisite to modernization of uh, agri uh, Moroccan agriculture. So the colonization and irrigation program were the first step of a process of radical transformation of the Garb rural landscape. A landscape made of geometrical field patterns, of rectilinear canals, and of standardized dimensions rapidly emerged in the region. This is a map showing the before and after situation in an area that was already cultivated and that was expropriated and redistributed to local population. However, the situation in the Garb is much more educated because in some other cases the colonization was carried out by private, so it's pretty much better than a uh, different pattern that uh, <coughs> mayors want to be added. 
And this is a scheme showing how land was distributed and how the different cultivation typologies were arranged according to the different quality of the soil. Indeed, the soil in this, uh, this area, in the Gar, becomes more sandy when uh, distant from water, from the river, which you see uh, on the top of this scheme, and therefore also the cultivation typology had to change. And so, it is in this context of this highly impacting program of transformation of the Gar's agriculture that Ecosha and his team started to work on a, of, on a series of resettlement schemes whose aim was to create a network of agro-industrial villages with the aim of fostering the modernization of the area and settling local nomadic and semi-nomadic population. Um, most of the material I will show you now um, comes from an archive that belonged to Ecosha, which is, luckily for me, actually in Brussels, and that contains uh, unpublished materials and pretty unexplored materials, because it's not part of the official Ecosha archives, so it's, uh, um, let's say, some fresh material to be, to be explored. And this is the first attempt I made to quantify the extent of the, uh, of the area involved in this project. As you can see uh, from what I got from uh, uh, Moray, which was a collaborator, a close one of the most, uh, one of the closer collaborator of Ecosha, um, 81 rural villages have been built, and in 1956, other 17 uh, were in the process of being uh, studied. <coughs> These three maps locate the distribution of primary, secondary, and tertiary centers in the Gar and their respective areas of influence. And this obviously reminds the scheme I showed you before, showing a, a hierarchical network. Even though it's not clear for me now what is what were the specificity of these primary, secondary, tertiary centers, this is something I still have to uh, explore. But the archive also contains material concerning the way in which the projects were conceived and carried out. Indeed, it contains documents attesting the many surveys that were conducted on the ground to understand which were the traditional form of living and the construction system in the region, showing, uh, let's say, a forerunning interest for what we can call a contextualist, contextualist approach to planning. And we also know that the planning process was conducted in dialogue with local authorities and the Moroccan population putting the basis for a rudimentary participative approach to design and decision making, whose traces can be somehow uh, still uh, seen in, uh, in some form of uh, um, territorial management uh, uh, forms in, in Morocco, in actual Morocco. Um, to make this possible, Ecoshard organized his team of collaborators into what he called Atelier Mobile. Interdisciplinary groups made of architects, landscape designers, engineers and ethnographers that were assigned to a specific area of the Gar with the aim of carrying out surveys and establishing a contact with local communities. This image uh, shows Elie Moret um, sketching the plan of a village while sitting in a tent together with local rep representatives. And we also have many of these sketches. Most of them have common traits. They are closely linked with uh, one of the roads uh, clo um, crossing the garden. They are located in places where water is available to be extracted from wells any time of the year. They include an area uh, for tents, and they are provided with some basic common facilities, sport facilities, public spaces, and so on. These are other uh, sketches as you can see, in certain cases, they are villages built from scratch, like the, the one on your left. In other cases, they are extensions of uh, existing small rural centers, uh, where the new and old part try to dialogue somehow. Uh, as you can see here, these two were the existing part, but there is always an attempt to link to link it with the, the new part, 
with a very not too sure intrusive uh, uh, intervention, like a, a square and a street linking the two parts with the new facilities. These sketches and these schemes are also important, an important resource to understand the temporal extension of this uh, resettlement program. And in fact, some of them are much more recent. This one dates to the 1970s, therefore proving that Ecosha continued to work in the GARP as a consultant, probably within the framework uh, of some UN-funded programs, even after he left the direction of the Soviet Urbanism, and for almost two decades after Moroccan independence. Um, I wanted to conclude with the question, I don't know if I have time, we will go very quickly to them, we will have time to discuss it later. These are very practical and open questions, um, things I'm trying to work on uh, in this period that we might uh, want to discuss, uh, I would like to discuss with you later. Um, so as I showed, the modernization process in the Garden Valley acted on many levels that are in reality closely connected one to each other. From the material that has been examined since, since now, it emerges that eco shell preoccupations concerning the guard are much more connected to finding a rational and efficient way to put the settlement in relation with the logics of agricultural production and to meet the requirements that come from the specificity of the guard cultural environment rather than what we can roughly define as more architectural concerns. I found very few drawings of buildings or facades that were actually built, and also the construction techniques seems not to be the most important topic of the Ecosha and the, his team researches. On the contrary, very detailed map of the topography of the area can be found of the patterns of fields, of the water distribution, and so on. So, the case study asks to complement traditional methodologies of architectural history with techniques and methods that come from field, from neighboring fields, such as landscape design and landscape analysis. So what I'm doing now is trying to look into mapping techniques uh, and trying to understand how I can use them in the context of this research, in particular, specifically I'm looking into the so-called Delft uh, uh, cartographic school and thinking to the work of Stenberg and Ray and so on. Uh, then obviously the other question is what should be mapped. Uh, I might have some suggestions, for example, uh, I noticed something quite interesting. If you have a quick, a quick look uh, just to Google Earth, uh, to the Moroccan landscape, many of the patterns that I briefly showed you before are still present and still influence the way uh, the car landscape is exploited and is used. Uh, but also mapping can be a tool to work on the archive and try to understand what were the special relationships that were served by Ecosha and the special rationale we had that. Uh, I think you can conclude that the, only, the last question was simply the large scale of the, the project obviously had some problems, so I'm still uh, reasoning on that. Thank you.